I'm Terry Mitchell. I'm Andre Longoria. And today we'll be discussing the physics behind bottle flipping. Alright, if you've never heard of bottle flipping before, uh, here's the basis. With the bottle in hand, a force is applied with the flick of a wrist, the bottom of the bottle rotating away from the person. It performs successfully with the proper amount of vertical and horizontal velocity, it should land upright. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't. Go ahead. Ah. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> and a good example. The topics we'll be discussing today are surface area. Gravity, momentum, kinetic energy, center of mass, and elasticity collision. Uh, first up with surface area, as you see today, we have many different sized bottoms with bases. Uh, obviously, the more wider the base, the easier it is to land it. Oh, yeah. uh, and also depends on the thickness of the type of plastic used to create the bottle. Uh, for example, a Fiji bottle with a good square base is probably the most easiest to do next to the larger base of this one. After surface area, we can discuss the elasticity. And basically what that is, after the bottle itself makes contact with the table, uh, collision is made and energy is transferred, this type of energy elasticity. Uh, if you don't know, elasticity is the measure of how much kinetic energy remains um, as kinetic energy after a collision is made. And depending on the type of bottle, which depends on the thickness of plastic used to create such bottles, uh, when the plastic bottle meets the table, it comes out to about 50 newtons and a lot of that energy gets transferred into the water itself, which is why if an improper bottle flip is done, it tends to flip over. After elasticity, we can talk about water levels and center of mass. Depending on how much water in the bottle will affect where the center of mass is, and the center of mass is where it rotates whenever it goes into free fall after you flick it. For comparison, a bottle with a much higher uh, water level versus the one third water level, which is the recommended amount for a proper bottle flip, it, it's much harder to flip without it compared to a bottle that is basically one third filled. A bottle such as this one, which has a larger surface area, doesn't need as much water to affect the center of mass, which is why for bottles or these gallon sized jugs, the water contents can be much lower to for center of mass. Fluid dynamics also helps in the bottle flipping. Uh, as the bottle rotates, the bottle rotates around the center of mass. Uh, it's just like throwing a hammer. If you throw a hammer, it goes in a circular motion. The hammer rotates as the handle rotates around it. And that's pretty much the same basis as uh, uh, bottle flipping. Now how much kinetic energy you put on the force. It's how much uh, horizontal velocity you would give it the bottle. So if you put too much kinetic energy, you, uh, the bottle will flip. If you put too less, less energy, uh, it won't do a full rotation and it'll just flop. <clears throat> Gravity, as it rotates, it rotates in a circular motion as it goes down. So it rotates in a parabolic arc and it helps it rotate around until it lands on the bottom. Conclusively, the group has discussed the many aspects of what one should consider when attempting to bottle flip. From the type of bottle used, to the water levels, and the amount of force applied, if you take all these factors into consideration, you too can be a successful bottle flipper. Hi, I'm Terry Mitchell. Hi, I'm Andre Longoria. And we're going to be discussing the physics behind bottle flipping. Okay, one, two, three. Larger base of this one. 